Now, were you born in, in England or America? I was born in the Bronx. Born in the Bronx? I went to a British boarding school when I was nine. Oh, that's how you got over there. Yeah. My mother was uh, uh, offered a, a job singing with the Vic Lewis Orchestra in London and with Dudley Moore on piano before he was a movie star. And this is in 19, I guess, 1960, uh, somewhere around there. And um, I left the Bronx and, uh, and uh, ended up in, um, in London, and I was very depressed uh, because you know, I was so misplaced. And uh, Dudley Moore said, you know, can you play any piano? Said, yeah, a little bit. So we played Heart and Soul together. He told me a few jokes, and I, I felt a lot better. He was a really nice guy. You know, he saw that I was a kid who was, you know, not, not very happy about being uh, exiled <laughs> in the jazz world. So my mom, you know, she, she started working around Europe, and she had to have some place to place me. Uh, so she put me in this boarding school in Switzerland, which is in the center of Europe where wherever she was on a school holiday, I could get to, you know, meet her. You know, I'd just get on a train and she'd be on the other side. We, you know, I'd meet her in Baden-Baden, Germany, or Rome, or Paris, or then, you know, Copenhagen, or, you know, we should be playing with Stan Getz or somebody like that. That was my childhood, you know. It was it was really interesting. There's some interesting stuff. Like she'd be singing duets with Chet Baker, and um, just a, a, a different sort of childhood I had. You know. It sounds like it was very uh, informative. Yeah. For example, in boarding school, I went to Aigon College in Villachezier in, uh, in Switzerland. And um, my roommate at the time, there was just two, two boys in the room, and I was about 11, 10 or 11 or something. And his name was Michel Bouvier, and he kept telling me, his Uncle Jack is going to be president of the United States, and I'm going to pop him in the mouth <laughs> for, for bragging, but he, was, he, wasn't, he wasn't bragging. His, his uncle John Kennedy became president. So. Sure, Jacqueline Bouvier. That's right. I was in the room with Michel Bouvier. He was my roommate in school. Wow. At first, uh, her name was the Bouvier. American together, you know. Did you ever hear the song Jackie Onassis? No. Which, who did that? Oh, you've got to Google it, man. YouTube. Human sexual response. Okay. First, her name was Bouvier. Then she changed to Jackie K. <laughs> After her date with tragedy, Aristotle will take care of me. <laughs> but there's this drag queen, Musty Chiffon, who was in the band. Okay. And she's a dear friend. I know, you know, they were part of the Boston scene. And Musty gave us a tape, and uh, she would do the song in drag. <laughs> and it was amazing. Because <laughs> she looked like, you know, a, a drag funny. queen doing Jackie O. That's great. So, uh, wow, you were with Jackie's nephew? Yeah. In, uh... In, in boarding school in Switzerland, which was a British school, I, I guess there were about 120 kids in, in all. And, um, you know, it went from, so I guess, sixth grade to 12th. And uh, I started out there. And I left when I was about 13 or 14, I guess, and went to California for a <coughs> week. Months, in fact, when my mother was managed by Buck Ram, the Platter's original manager. Oh. And, uh, also, David from the Diamonds. I met him. And we all lived in the same housing complex for a bit. And then I went back to New York. My mother stayed in L.A. And I went back to Taft High School in the Bronx <laughs> after going through this whole European experience. And I started playing at the Cafe Wa, where Jimi Hendrix was just about to leave for England. And I caught the tail end of uh, his tenure at the Cafe Wa, and I was playing the kids' show the day show, and he was playing the night show. So you got to meet Jimmy? Oh, yeah. I couldn't believe the way he looked when he got back from England. And he was walking down 8th Street, and I said, look at you. He was with this blonde Swedish girl who was walking up 8th Street. And he looked decked out like a Christmas tree. It's like, Jimmy, you know. He said, I'm going go into the record store there, and you can see my album. It's like, have you ever been experienced, you know, are you experienced? And I said, okay, I'll check it out. So he said, bye, and I saw him again. I went into the record store, and sure, it was there. It was under eight for Hendrix, right now, on 8th Street in the, uh, in the bin, and I thought, Jimmy's made it, great, you know. A lot of the guys were getting calls, you know, from the, from the Google Street, and uh, like Cafe Wa and the, uh, Caf and the, um, the way it went around, the Night Owl. The Blues Magoos had a hit, you know, with the, 
We has nothing yet. We see. Wonderful song. Yeah, and Pepe Castro is a good friend of mine. I knew him back in in those days when he was sixteen, and you know, I think I was fifteen, and we were we were playing in rival clubs. Now, at that age, you were allowed to go into the clubs. Yeah, well, there was no there was no alcohol in the in the day show for um, the Cafe Wa, so we basically had a bunch of screaming teeny bobbers listen to us, and there was another group called the Raves, and there was Kangaroo that had John Hall in it. The Castiles with Bruce Springsteen. I remember the days Bruce came in to play the Wah, and I had to show him the, the deal. You know, he was gonna, he was unloading a van with gear. I said, nobody moves the back line. You're back in the van, and he did. You know, with his band. His, I think his dad or some family member drove the van, and, and he used the gear, and they 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 got a, a spot in the day show. The Castiles. They did a lot of R&B stuff. I remember. And now Kangaroo. Do you remember the great. woman in the band? Yeah, Teddy Spilios on guitar. You know, a lot of people thought he was, you know, as good as Hendrix or Clapton, you know, he, but he just vanished. And John Hall went on to be a politician. But... And, and form Orleans, yeah. And and who was the woman in the band? Do you remember? It was Barbara Keith. Barbara Keith, thank you. But she wasn't in the original band. The oh, okay. Trio. The original kangaroo was just a trio, and then uh, they had a... a they added Barbara Keith later on. I, I watched this whole thing happen, and then they got a record deal with uh, with the same guys who uh, who produced the uh, Bruce McCoos, I believe, with a couple of brothers. And um, they were, I, I can't remember if they were on Mercury, or, I'm not sure what label it was. But uh, I remember the, seeing other guys in the, in, uh, in the Cafe Wa getting record deals, and I was like, whoa, you know, so we auditioned for uh, the same producers, it was a couple of brothers, I can't remember who the Blues and the Goose producers were. Um, <clears throat> Barbara Keith wrote a hit for uh, Delaney and Bonnie, was it, Free the People? I believe so, yeah. Barbara Keith was a great songwriter and, and, uh, and, and you know, a strong presence with Kangaroo. I mean, she did change the band, the band were a power trio before and then they sort of got more folky, but they got the record deal, you know. Now, you know she's got a band with her family called Stone Coyote. I don't know that. I, I, sort of, I know she was writing poetry. I saw that. Oh, they have a stack of albums out. I reviewed a lot of them for allmusic.com. Okay. I don't know if you've ever looked at that site. No. Okay, go to allmusic.com. It's a metadata database. Okay. I've done 5,000 reviews for them. Uh, Steve Hawley's album, his solo album. Mm -hmm. I wrote the review, and a lot of Barbara Keith's Stone Coyote. So um, I'll check it out because I, you know, I I like following up on people that just came up with me at the same time. Yeah, because I'm thinking it might be a cool thing for the Stone Coyote and your band yeah. to, uh, you know, do a duo, you know, kind of like go back in time, since they're all playing. It's her husband, her son, and her. Well, I, yeah. I really wonder what happened to Teddy Spilios of Kangaroo. He's been very evasive. Uh, you know, John Hall is a politician now in Connecticut. Is, I thought he was out of office. Is he back in office? He's, he's out of office, but he was you know, a Democrat out of Connecticut, which is amazing, you know, really, what a rich life he's had. Well, I was friendly with Larry Hoppin, the late Larry Hoppin. Mm, I didn't know Larry passed away. Yeah, Larry died about a year ago. Oh, okay. Another one. Oh, no, I mean, we lost Adrian Medeiros in Boston this week. He was in a band called Tangerine Zoo. Right. You remember that band? Yeah. Okay, so we lost Adrian. He was a dear friend of mine, and... Dave Tedeschi, they went and played with Ben Orr of the Cars. Okay. And Ben, I was Ben's videographer in 19, I don't know, 97. Mm -hmm. I was his official videographer, and John Calicious was in the band, and my audio guy, and Ben, they're all dead. And then the road manager died this week, Dave Tedeschi. Wow. So then Adrian, and Adrian was kind of part of it. So that's five people since, like, 98, and that's horrible. Yeah, it is. And Ben of the Cars, you know, you, you, the Cars went back on tour, but Ben was the voice. Ben 11 letters. Hmm? His last name wasn't Orr, it was Longer. Orr Zachowski. That's right. 11 letters. And what was <laughs> uh, Rick Okasik's real name? I don't know. Ott, O-T, Kasich. Is that right? Yeah, because they did one album on Paramount Records, Milkwood. Mm-hmm. And Greg Hawks is a guest star. Okay. Now, I saw Greg Hawks Sunday night. He did a holiday show, and uh, he's been on the show a couple of times. He was had the ukulele, and he was doing Drive. Wow. 
amazing. He did, he did a whole Beatles album on ukulele. Amazing. Yeah, he's a great guy. Um, I, I think he's my Facebook friend, actually, because we have a mutual friend named Ed Scosciuto, so. I don't know Ed. Yeah. We've got to look up Barbara Keith on Facebook now, and then we can both friend her. Okay. Because she could tell you where uh, <clears throat> Teddy went, you know? Maybe, but Teddy, like, he joined a monastery or something. He's, like, a very strange uh, thing. He's, he was touted to be the next Clapton, and then he just disappeared off. The, he had a group called Holy Moses, and he was less and less interested and involved, I think, because once you play with John Hall, and John is such a stimulating musician, I think anyone you play with afterwards is not going to be as exciting. You know, sort of like Paul Kossoff with Free. You know, Paul, Paul told me, you know, he... In Tokyo, he said, I'll never find another band like Free. I know it, he said. And so he, I asked him what he was going to do, and he said, I'm going to, I'm going to disappear in powder drugs. I'm wow. Gonna, and, you know, he, he, he managed to do that very effectively within a couple of years of having our, that conversation. That, um, so, you know, I mean, a lot musicians sometimes, you know, if, they, if they're in a great situation and they lose that, it's like the end of, the li of their lives. You know, they just don't want to deal with it anymore. Now, I used to work with the band Spirit back in 92. Yeah. So Randy California was in Hendrix's uh, Jimmy James and the Blue Flames. Okay. So did you ever see them play together? Um, I don't recall. You know, it's, it's so long. I did see Spirit's first gig. Laura Nero took me. 